The Metro Manila Film Festival MMFF, is an annual film festival held in Metro Manila, the Philippines. The festival, which runs from December 25 Christmas, through New Year's Day and into first weekend of January in the following year, focuses on Filipino films. During the course of the festival, only films approved by the jurors of the MMFF are shown in movie theaters. No foreign movies are shown except in 3D theaters and IMAX theaters. It is one of the two Filipino major film festivals to exclude foreign films in a week-long period, the other being the Pista ng Pelikuling Pilipino happening during August. The annual event began with the 1975 Metro Manila Film Festival, during which Diligen Mo ng Hamog ang Yuhan a Lupa, Water the Thirsty Earth with Dew, by Augusto Buenaventura won the Best Film Award. One of the festival highlights is the parade of floats at the opening of the festival. The floats, each one representing a movie entry with their respective stars, parade down Roxas Boulevard. On the awards night, a Best Float Award is also announced along with the major acting awards. History A precursor the current festival began in 1966. Then Mayor of Manila Antonio Villegas inaugurated the Manila Film Festival. Manila Tagalog Film Festival. It was a 12-day event from June 14 through June 24, Manila's birthday, during which only locally produced films could be shown in the theaters. The festival featured a parade in downtown Manila of actors and the featured films. In addition, in an effort to promote Philippine films, Antonio Villegas banned the showing of foreign films at movie houses during the Manila Film Festival. Most of the first batch of the festival films came up with English titles. Despite the lack of support, there were different changes in making the festival flourish. The best films of Manila Film Festival included Dig Dig ng Mgaapi, 1966, Dahil sa Icing Bulaklak, 1967, Manila, Open City, 1968, Patria Adorada. 1969. Damasalang. 1970. Kadena de Amor. 1971. Elias, Basilio at Sisa. 1972. Nueva Visaya. 1973. Alaala Mo Dagdig Co. 1974. Starting in 1975, Manila Film Festival was discontinued as Metro Manila Film Festival took over. In 1973, the Manila Film Festival was discontinued as martial law was imposed in September the year before. On September 21, 1975, during the Marcos dictatorship, the Filmfest was expanded to include all the other cities and towns in the newly formed Metro Manila and began under the name, 1975 Metropolitan Film Festival, MFF. In 1977, name was changed to, Metro Manila Film Festival. After Villiga's death in 1984, a special award in the Metro Manila Film Festival, the Gatpuno Antonio J. Villiga's Cultural Award, was created in his honor and is given to the best film that best portrays Philippine culture and Filipino people to the world. MRN Film International's Andrea, Pano Ba Ang Maging Icing Ina, was the first one to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award in 1990. Since then, it has been awarding prestigious films that deserves the honors. In 2010, the film festival underwent some changes. First, the commercial viability criterion, box office performance of the entries, was removed. As of 2010, the criteria for the selection of best pictures are, artistry, creativity and technical excellence, innovation, and thematic value. Entries are also judged for global appeal, 70%, and Filipino cultural and or historical value, 30%. In addition, the festival format gave a tribute to independent. Indie films. Lastly, the established board of jurors was expanded to include housewives, drivers, students, teachers, etc. The festival logo was changed to feature a map of the metropolis of Manila, based on the old seal of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority with 17 stars on it symbolizing the 17 cities and municipality of Metro Manila. The logo for the first 35 festivals featured a torch, in September 2011, Addy. 
Francis Tolentino, then chairman of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority MMDA, changed the category name of Indie Films to New Wave Films to make it sound better and more attractive to hear, as well as including Student Short Film Category for the first time. Consequently, the next year, the 38th Metro Manila Film Festival held in 2012 became the highest earning MMFF to date with 767 million pesos, 21% higher than that of 2011. In January 2013 Interaxion.com review, writer Jessica Zafra complained. Speaking of standards, why do we bother to review the festival entries when most of them are rubbish? Because they're not supposed to be rubbish. Contrary to what you've been led to believe, entertainment and commercial appeal are not synonyms for garbage. There are good commercial movies, and there are bad commercial movies. The bad outnumber the good because the studios think the viewers are idiots. Notable incidents there have been numerous notable incidents during the various festivals. In 1977, director Lino Bracca walked out of the awarding ceremonies at the Metropolitan Theater when Celso Ad. Castillo's burlesque queen starring Vilma Santos won eight of the ten awards, including the Best Picture Award during the third Metro Manila Film Festival. Mr. Bracca reportedly threw invectives at Rolando Tinio, who was the chairman of the panel of judges of the festival. In 1978, the Board of Jurors decided to not award honors for Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress on the 4th Metro Manila Film Festival. Instead, the jurors gave Nora Honor a Best Performer award for her role in the movie Atse. Honor beat Vilma Santos, whom fortune tellers on the talk show of Inde Badade and many moviegoers predicted would win the award for her role in the movie Rubia Servios. When Nora accepted her award, she cried, Mama, Molly Ang Hula Nila. Mama, their prediction is wrong. Apparently because fortune tellers incorrectly predicted the outcome. In 1983, during the awards night of the 9th Metro Manila Film Festival, many were surprised after Coney Reyes won the Best Actress Award for the movie Bago Kamalat Ang Dugo and Anthony Alonso is given the Best Actor Award for the same movie, besting acting greats Charito Solis, Philip Salvador, and Vic Salayan, who were all in the movie Carnal. In addition, jurors' standards of giving Willie Milan the Best Director Award against Lino Bracca is questioned. In 1986, for the first time, the 12th Metro Manila Film Festival did not give out the traditional first and second best picture awards as well as the other two categories, best story and best screenplay. According to one of the jurors, Ting Ting Kowanko stated, No one of the seven entries deserved these awards. He added that they would like to express their concern over the current state of the Philippine movie industry as reflected in the entries to the year's MMFF. The entries failed to reinforce and inculcate positive Filipino values by portraying negative stereotypes, imitating foreign films and perpetuating commercially oriented movies. In 1988, during the award-giving ceremony of the 14th Metro Manila Film Festival, stuntman and character actor turned filmmaker Baldo Maro won the Best Actor for Patrolman Film, which also won him the Best Director Award. In fact, he was not known before this. He vested prize-winning director Chito Rano of Itanong Mo Sa Bawan in the division, sending uproar from well-meaning critics and regular local film observers. Nevertheless, the announced Best Director Award goes to Loris Guillen, in 1993, during the Gabby Ng Parangal of the 1993 Metro Manila Film Festival. The list of winners was supposedly leaked, in 1994, during the Gabby Ng Parangal of 20th Metro Manila Film Festival held in PIC, the six major awards, three Best Pictures, Gatpuno Antonio J. Villegas Cultural Awards, Best Director, and Best Screenplay, were not given as Alejandro Rosas, chairman of the Board of Jurors announced that, none of the entries was deserving. 
On the side note, the Manila Film Fest MFF, had a similar, but different case in which both the Best Actress and Best Actor awards were given to Rufa Gutierrez and Gabby Concepcion respectively instead of the supposed to be winners. In 2001, on December 27 of the 27th Metro Manila Film Festival, Cesar Montano, although he received the Best Actor award, expressed his disappointment that his film, Bagong Bawan did not receive the Best Picture award. He states, for me, Bagong Bawan is still the best picture. No offense meant, but for others, Yamashita may be the best picture. Kanya Kanya, Yan. Wala na lang kaming trophy. Bibili na lang kami ng trophy sa recto, to each his own. We just don't have a trophy. We'll just buy one in recto. Referring to a strip on CM. Recto Avenue in Manila notorious for manufacturing fake diplomas, certificates and trophies, in 2002, first, the cast of the film Dakota. 70 walked out of the award ceremonies after Luel Hadi Bautista failed to win the Best Story and Best Screenplay Awards. Even more controversial was the decision of the judges to name the first-timer Aramina the best actress for her role in Mono Po, beating multi-awarded Vilma Santos, who was in Dakota. 70. In addition, the producers of the film Spirit Warriors, The Shortcut and Lastic Man protested the non-inclusion of the two films as official entries, prompting the Metro Manila Film Festival Committee to extend the annual event. Consequently, the committee extended the film screenings to seven days to accommodate two more films which did not make it to the entries. Speaking of the films, Chito Rono, director of Second Best Picture Dakota, 70, was curious as to why was Spirit Warriors, the shortcut named the third best picture award if the officials disqualify it as an official entry. In the same way, the production team of Anga Gimit, Antin Anting Ni Lolo was also appalled to the decision of the jurors to give the best visual effects award to Spirit Warriors, the shortcut if they only use mono, beating their use of the more advanced Dolby Digital System. In 2005, director Joel Lemangan walked out after he lost to José Javier Reyes. Lemangan failed to win the best director for Blue Moon against Reyes. Katab. In the same year, Regal Films's matriarch Lily Monteverde voiced out her disappointment as she lamented that some winners in the festival were undeserving. In 2006, OctoArts Films and MZET Productions Enteng Kabiso 3, OK Ka, Fairy Co., The Legend Goes On and On and On was declared the best picture after festival organizers changed the criteria for the award by giving more weight to commercial appeal. As it was the only prize that the film won, the decision to let the film receive it becomes the subject of yet another controversy at the festival. Movie producer Star Cinema made a protest to the MMDA and wrote to then MMFF chairman Bayani Fernando, claiming that the movie Casal, Casali, Casalo should have won Best Picture because it topped the box office for the first few days. In 2007, the awards night ended in less than an hour after festival organizers decided to just announce the winners without even mentioning the nominees for each category. The organizers explained that it had to be rushed and had to end at exactly 9 p.m. because a concert, featuring singer Lani Misalucha, was scheduled right after the awards ceremonies. In 2011, Amable. Tikoy. Aguiluz declined to accept the award for Best Director for the movie Manila Kingpin after he claimed that the movie was edited without his consent beyond his recognition. In 2014, Rina Navarro, one of the producers of Bonifacio, Ang Unang Pongulo questioned the result of the panel's judgment in the awards night. The movie won the most coveted Best Picture Award but it failed to win the other major categories such as the Best Director Award, the Best Actor and Best Actress Awards, the Best Screenplay Award, and the Best Original Story Award all of which went to Dan Villegas. English only, please. In 2015, a day before the awards night, Eric Motti's Honor Thy Father was disqualified for the Best Picture Award after being screened at the Cinema One Originals. Don Don Monteverde, the film's producer, revealed that they did disclose this information beforehand. He attested that its premiere at the Cinema One Festival didn't generate revenue which complies by the rules. He also questioned the timing of this decision, one day before the awards ceremony, and he demanded an investigation. 
In 2016, the festival gained buzz after the EXECOM Executive Committee announced the top eight entries for the 2016 edition. Different from past years, the movies of the certified box office drawers Vice Ganda and Coco Martin's The Super Parental Guardians, Vic Sato's Enteng Cabiso, 10 and the Abangers, Regal Entertainment's Mono Po 7, Sinoy and V. Hong Navarro's Meng Kepwang Returns was rejected in that edition. But despite good reviews about the eight entries, the film festival only grossed 373 million pesos, or a 667 million pesos drop from 2015 Metro Manila Film Festival's 1.040 billion pesos. And the edition of the festival showed only indie films. The idea of indie-only film was later scrapped and commercial films was allowed again. Festivals Merit Categories Festival Awards Special Awards Other Awards Most Wins This is a list of superlative Metro Manila Film Festival winners. This list is current as of the 2016 Metro Manila Film Festival Gabby Ng Parangal Awards Ceremony, held on December 29, 2016. The following are 15 films which have received 10 or more awards in different categories. Best Director Best Actor Best Actress Best Supporting Actor Best Supporting Actress Most Combined Awards for Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Director, Most Combined Awards for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress. Top 30 Metro Manila Film Festival Entries The table shows the top 30 highest grossing Filipino film entries in the Metro Manila Film Festival. Note, all figures are in Philippine Peso. References External links IMDB, Metro Manila Film Festival Official website of the Metro Manila Film Festival